you can never complete everything you ever want to do. There's never a, a time when you can say, now my job is finished and I can go home. I think we still need to study the duration of uh, protection and uh, we need more data. But in terms of what the virus is going to do next, there is still an element of unpredictability. But I do feel that I've put the science division and some of the processes, as I described, on a path where they're very stable and secure and they will uh, be integrated. They've already been integrated and now it's time for me to, to do something different, take on a fresh challenge. As you know, you know, when I moved to WHO at the end of 2017, it was on the urging of the Director General at that time to join his senior leadership team as the Deputy Director General. I was at that time head of the ICMR, Secretary Health Research. It was not anywhere on my plans or horizon that I would uh, be uh, you know, joining the WHO in any capacity. So that was came as a surprise at that time and uh, uh, it uh, I felt okay it's a good opportunity to have that global experience and the Indian government was also very supportive that I should join the WHO and that's why I came so even at that time there was never uh, a question of uh, you know a long-term commitment to to WHO now of course the way things turned out was that uh, there was a transformation process we created the science division. I became the chief scientist, the first chief scientist. I had to build the science division. That was a very exciting opportunity for me. And then we were into the pandemic at the end of 2019. So the last three years, three and a half years since the science division was created has really been about developing a vision, developing a strategy, putting in place the processes, and at the same time, uh, applying all of that to the pandemic. Health has become uh, front and center uh, of uh, every global leader and politician's uh, vision and, and portfolio. So in that sense, also, I think WHO's role and remit and image and everything was, was uh, upgraded to the point where heads of state were, I think, for the first time, really coming to the WHO on a regular basis. Earlier, it was basically a interaction with uh, ministries of health. And all that is, I think, very good for health. You can never complete everything you ever want to do. There's never a, a time when you can say, now my job is finished and I can go home. That should never happen, I think, to anybody, uh, especially in a large organization like WHO. But I do feel that I've put the science division and some of the processes, as I described, on a path where they're very stable and secure and they will... Uh, be integrated. They've already been integrated. And now it's time for me to, to do something different, take on a fresh challenge. We have always said, and I've uh, highlighted many times, the need for a booster dose. I think the booster uptake in most countries is too low. That is, I'm talking about the first booster or the third dose, which I think less than 20% of people in India have probably taken. And so I think it's clear now that you need that third dose to give you longer lasting immunity. Now, of course, many countries are going into fourth and fifth doses, which we're not recommending. I think we still need to study the duration of uh, protection and uh, we need more data. But in terms of what the virus is going to do next, there is still an element of unpredictability. Uh, we have been lucky that in the last about 10 or 11 months that Omicron has evolved and we've had about 300 sub lineages of Omicron that we are now tracking the new virus. It's still evolving, it's still adapting. So this is why we need to be cautious still and we still need to do the R&D for 
new va better vaccines that can prevent infection because the current vaccines we know are good at preventing severe disease, but not so good at stopping infection or stopping transmission. I think what we need is more systematic follow-up and studies, plus, of course, the provision of care for people who are suffering from these symptoms in terms of, it's mostly symptomatic care, rehabilitation, physiotherapy, et cetera, guidance, counseling, you know. Uh, those need to be set up because I think there can be quite a large burden of this, which is not recognized right now. And also, because we have in India a large burden of non-communicable diseases, already the baseline of hypertension and diabetes is very high among young adults. And so this, having had a COVID infection, could actually trigger some changes. We know that it causes inflammatory changes. We know that it uh, alters the, the, the coagulation pathways and causes vascular you know, thrombosis and different organ systems. Now, what is happening is that there are many studies coming out mainly of the high income countries where they have been able to follow up people and document the kind of things you're talking about. The main syndromes are the fatigue syndrome. You have the neurological syndrome with the, you know, the fog and not being able to concentrate or work. And then you have the respiratory syndrome with breathlessness and not able to do physical activity. Now, one of the reasons why we don't want people to start taking it very casually and saying it's another cold, many people say, oh, it's another cold now. Well, it's not because even with an asymptomatic infection, there are a small percentage of people who can have these long COVID symptoms. You know, the goals are always aspirational. So we may not achieve that exact goal by 2025 elimination because we are far from it when you look at our burden but it's important to have an ambitious goal, to set an ambitious goal and to try to do everything to achieve it. And the main challenge in TB is of course that we don't have a good vaccine. Uh, so we need much more investment and India can do a lot more in developing new vaccines, particularly using the new platform technologies that we've seen today and the capacity we have public sector and private sector. So there needs to be a mission mode global mission led by India and a few other high burden countries to develop a better TB vaccine. We did it for COVID, as you said, in very record time. It should be, TB is a more complex pathogen than COVID. COVID turned out to be a very easy virus to develop a vaccine against. We know TB will be challenging, but we have to try. As you know, TB is not a simple biomedical disease. It's very much rooted in poverty and undernutrition. And so it, it again requires a multi-sectoral approach, but I think India has not only the high level political leadership, but also the, the resources to, to, to find you know, new tools, better tools, and also to do more field research, implementation research.